Welcome back to the show, everybody. I want to introduce you to a local you may know here in Park City, but also if you don't, uh, what an incredible guy he is, what he's doing for the Moran Eye Center, as well as People's Health Clinic, but he's also traveling around the world to give eyesight to people who otherwise may not get that. And we want to introduce you to Dr. Jeff Taven, who is in. How you doing, Jeff? I'm doing very well. So let me ask you a first question. Where have you not been yet uh, <laughs> in the world? You've been <laughs> to every possible country I can think no, of. No, I'm not everywhere, but we're starting to really work a lot in Asia and Africa. Oh my gosh, so let's start. First things first, what you're doing uh, with your program and how you're traveling, how did that all begin though? You know, were you, you were working at the Moran Eye Center and or how long have you been traveling well, around I, the world? I worked internationally before I came mm -hmm. to Utah. I, after I finished my eye surgery training, I worked in Nepal and I've been very fortunate. I have an amazing partner in Kathmandu. I went to Nepal because there really was no eye care. There was an overwhelming amount of cataract blindness. And I went to Nepal thinking I would start trying to build something. Mm -hmm. And I was very fortunate in that when I was doing my training, there was actually a doctor from Nepal who was training in Australia, who's one of the most brilliant people I've ever met named Sandik Ruit. And he had been back in Nepal for a year when I got there. And we joined forces and started a program called the Himalayan Cataract Project teaching first doctors to do cataract surgery, then creating a more encompassing program to train paramedical personnel, nurses, technicians. Then we started taking our best young cataract surgeons and sending them for advanced training and subspecialty eye care. Then we started a full residency program. And Kathmandu, or Nepal, went from 15,000 cataracts a year to more than 200,000 oh in 15 years. The quality has really gone up. And our center of excellence in Nepal has sort of spread ripples throughout uh, Southeast Asia. I was teaching at the University of Vermont Medical School, and the Moran Eye Center recruited me to come to Utah. And the Moran Eye Center is one of the top couple mm -hmm. of eye centers in the world with an amazing faculty, an amazing chairman, amazing very committed people, they'd already been going to Ghana and had a program, uh, there's a link with the University of Utah Medical School and the National Training Hospital in Kumasi, Ghana. So they were interested in my coming, joining them in that effort, and joining the faculty as a cataract and corneal transplant specialist here at the University of Utah. When I was getting recruited, they mentioned they were building an outreach center up in Park City at the Redstone that I'd be able to work at, and uh, I'd get a chance to live in Park City and still work at a major medical center like the Moran Eye Center, University of Utah. Mm -hmm. So I kind of jumped at that chance, and also things were really running on their own quite well in Asia. and. Africa is really a disaster when it comes to eye care. And you get to live in Park City, which is why he's got the shirt and tie on with the marmot <laughs> jacket as well. <laughs> right? If you, you know that no, somebody no. loves the outdoors but is also yeah. the doctor by day, uh, you know, and he's, uh, you no. climb, you do, I mean, there's so much that goes on with Jeff Taven. We can't go into it all right now. But what we really want to get into is your, your last trip you just did to South Sudan. Yeah, myself and uh, a team from the Moran were just in South Sudan. How did it come and about it first? You know, it actually came about a a little bit through Park City, through uh, the Sundance Film Festival. As I was saying, we started working in Africa. We are trying to develop a center of excellence in Ghana and Ethiopia. And I'll talk in a couple of minutes maybe about Rwanda. And at the Sundance Film Festival in 2007, there was a film that won quite a few awards called God Grew Tired of Us, which is the story of the first lost boys from South Sudan to be repatriated back to the United States, mm -hmm. and an amazing story. One of the main characters was a guy named John Bull Dow, who had been in a village that was basically annihilated in the war. Wow. The women were all raped and taken captive. The men and boys were all killed. He fled with young boys across the desert. Half of them were killed. He was 13 and the leader. They made it to a, a refugee camp on the Ethiopian border where he lived for a year. War came there. He fled again with a large number of boys, somewhere up over 500. Again, over half died as they trekked across South Sudan again until they reached refugee camp in Ethiopia where at age 15 he started learning his ABCs and the documentary kind of really picked up on him. So were you were inspired by that documentary? No, I actually, I actually, actually I didn't see the okay. documentary. He was here at one prize for uh -huh. uh, uh, the 
I think it was the People's Choice Award okay. and won Best Documentary at Sundance 2007. And John is very charismatic. His uh, skin is a little darker than the color of your earrings, and his teeth are almost as white as yours. Wow. And he has this really charismatic mm -hmm. smile. He's about six foot nine. Oh my and gosh. And he got up afterwards and gave a sort of impassioned plea and said, you know, there's no health care. The war's now over. People are coming back to my village. Half of them are blind. There's no health care. I want to build a clinic. And the people in the audience at Sundance were so generous, a bunch of people got up and pledged. No way. And a group of people in Park City started trying to raise money for a health wow. clinic in Duke County, South Sudan. Well, then we got contacted, myself and my partner, Alan Crandall, mm -hmm. at the Moran, saying they need to do eye care. Can you come to South Sudan? And I said, well, we don't really work that way. We don't just go do service. We really, my whole, focuses on training, developing local systems, mm -hmm. training local mm -hmm. doctors. So we helped sponsor a South Sudanese doctor to go to actually Zimbabwe for eye surgery training. We took two high school graduates from a refugee camp, sent them to Nepal to train as ophthalmic technicians. Meanwhile, John developed this clinic. There are a couple of general practice doctors from Syria. There's Syrup a lot that went into that, it to that, getting over. And it's been actually something we've been planning on. We talked to mm -hmm. John a lot in 2007. Alan Crandall and I promised we'd come back to his village and do what That's we great. could to eliminate the blindness. We finally had things set up. We were going to go last year, but in the uh, preamble to the election uh -huh. for South Sudan to become an independent country. Was there on. was war there mm -hmm. and fighting very close to that village, so we didn't go. So as these pictures are on screen, why don't you tell us about your experience in South Sudan, specifically with these people? <laughs> it, it, it was incredible. We, we, you know, it was arguably, I think they'll probably show a picture in a few seconds, one of the huts, this is just doing uh, surgery, it was about 100, 115 degrees. Oh so gosh. normally I operate in scrub suits, this is just post-op day afterwards, we, out, we did about 300 surgeries. Virtually everyone we operated on was totally blind, and no one had ever had eye care there. It was the first intervention. You can see how happy the people are, and mm -hmm. it's the whole community. The person, the tall person in the blue shirt behind the patient who has his hands up uh -huh. is John Boldow. And John was there working at the clinic with us. We also had... Uh, a team from the Moran Eye Center, our chief resident Lloyd Williams, in addition to you know, Professor Alan Crandall. We had Michael Yeh, who's our international coordinator, and then Julie Crandall from the Moran. What's it like when you restore eyesight to these people and they look at you for the first time? <laughs> well, it's, what, what's it like? It, it, it's actually an amazing thing. There's this like, especially in a place like this where people have no idea they're gonna get their sight back. And they really don't know what's happening. We take off the bandage and there's this like moment of hesitation that they don't know what's going on and then this unbelievable and then, the, and then this smile. And it's like a one, two second delay and then just the absolute joy. But I hope they'll show a picture in a few seconds of someone being led by a stick. In this area, there's so, they have possibly the highest level of blindness in the world. South Sudan? Well, in even just this exact area. Mm -hmm. They have a huge amount of a infectious disease called trachoma, which causes corneal blindness and a lot of discomfort. Mm -hmm. They have uh, a huge amount of glaucoma that's genetic, an unbelievable rate of cataracts, and no one has ever done surgery. They also have a lot of river blindness, a lot of traumatic blindness from the war. So it was really kind of exciting going to a place that had never had eye care. And, and I we, think in a place we, like, you know, South Sudan, when they see a white person coming from America, you're representing hope uh, for the people who understand what you're yeah. doing there uh, once you get there. And then once they see you for the first time and understand mm -hmm. what has happened, uh, you know, what a huge thing you are doing. What a difference you're making in not only here in Utah, mm -hmm. but around the entire world. And it's true. this is what you see is everywhere, people being led by sticks. And when a person is blind, it also takes a child out of the fields, unfortunately, there's, they're just mm -hmm. trying to start a clinic there. There's no school. It's actually over 80% of the people are illiterate. And oh this region is one of the highest rates of illiteracy and probably the highest rate of blindness. And it was really exciting coming in there. The f people were so joyous. Oh, I'm sure. And to come into a community and make that sort of change.
And now yeah. you, you just finished that trip up, you come back for a quick uh, a weeks. recovery, yeah. I guess, if we call it that, back to Utah, and then you head off to Rwanda this I'm Friday, going to, is that right? I'm going to Rwanda on Friday. Wow. So how do you manage to keep up with all of this? You've got all this international travel, what you're doing for well, the, you know, everybody around the world, and then well, we, you we, still manage to climb and <laughs> have a good well, life here. Well, we have a, we have a great team. There's a great team at the Moran. I run also an international program called the Himalayan mm -hmm. Cataract Project. Mm -hmm. And we have a great team on the Himalayan Cataract Project, lots of great doctors that I work with. And uh, you were asking during the break how we choose where we go. Yeah. Really, I'm trying to do what we did in Nepal, where we really established a center of excellence, and then the quality is sort of extended in concentric mm -hmm. circles. Mm -hmm. You know, in places where five years ago in Nepal, Everyone who would come into an eye camp would be totally blind. Now our typical patient has excellent vision, having had cataract surgery in one eye and just a little bit blurred in the other. And the quality throughout Nepal is uniformly good. And that's what I'd like to see in Africa. I started working in Ghana because mm -hmm. Alan Crandall and Bob Hoffman from the Moran Eye Center have already been establishing a presence and starting. Then um, I have been told about a couple of really exceptional young doctors. In Rwanda, there's a doctor named John Nkurukie, who I was told by uh, one of my predecessors, or actually one of my sort of classmates at Harvard Medical School, a guy named Paul Farmer, runs a program called Partners in Health. And Paul told me the best, most exceptional doctor he knew in sub-Saharan Africa was an ophthalmologist who wanted to get more training from us. That's so great. we brought him here to the Moran Eye Center and then to Nepal for extra training, then back to Utah. And he's an amazing man. He had 18 family members killed in the genocide. Oh, jeez. I'm sure you've okay. got, you've oh, well, got okay. stories <laughs> beyond stories beyond stories, don't you? One of the other things I want to point out, too, about you, Jeff, is that you also managed to donate a lot of your time to the People's Health Clinic I do. so that and they I'm, can get the eye care, eye care they need. And actually, I'm going on Friday to Rwanda, Thursday night, I'm working at the People's Health Clinic. Look at you. Yeah. The People's Health uh, Clinic is a great place to go for those of you that are uninsured. Uh, it's an incredible facility, too. I'm amazed at how many doctors volunteer their time and also other volunteers as well to make sure that people who uh, may have lost their insurance recently in the last couple of years, and we've seen the numbers just jump, they've skyrocketed in the last few years, really can get uh, the care that they need. And the, the care at the People's Health Clinic is, again, like what we're trying to do in Africa, we make it ex second to none. Right. They get the same care at the People's Health Clinic they would get at the University of Utah. Or I'm also proud to say I'm on the staff here at the New Park City Hospital, mm -hmm. which is a you know, glorious and wonderful place to come for care. But the quality, if you come to People's Health Clinic, That's we're trying awesome. to make exactly the same. That's awesome. If you want more information on uh, Dr. Jeff Tabin, you're going to have to just get in touch with him <laughs> because he'll, he's got so many stories uh, beyond stories. Thank you for what you do here locally in Utah as well as around the world. Uh, an incredible uh, local park guide that we're happy to have here. We're happy well, that you were recruited to, to the Moran Eye Center and now you're helping at People's Health Clinic as well. It's an so, honor to be here. Nice to see you. Thanks so much. Best of luck in Rwanda. It's exciting. All right, we're going to take a short break here on the Mountain Morning Show. Stay with us. We'll be right back.